We shift from Iowa now to another very important early state, which would be South Carolina. Of course, the home state for Nikki Haley, Republican primary of that state set for the 24th of February. So let's bring Drew McKissick, who's the chair of the South Carolina Republican Party. Uh, Drew, good to see you. I, I guess the, the, lar the larger question that people want to know about that is that will we still have a competitive Republican primary, as funny as it sounds, uh, that early in the in the race, uh, will Governor Haley have a chance to defend her home turf, really make a, a stand in, in South Carolina? Well, look, that all comes down to uh, how the process unfolds. As you know, we've got Iowa, New Hampshire, and Nevada yet to go before we come to South Carolina. Uh, we put our primary on February 24th, which positions us about, uh, I think, 10 days before Super Tuesday which puts us in a prime spot to be what South Carolina uh, and its primary usually is historically, since we first held the primary in 1980, uh, we have become the graveyard and the brick wall <laughs> and the booster rocket to presidential candidates. Uh, a lot of campaigns don't get further than South Carolina, uh, but then we end up becoming a booster rocket, if you will, to somebody. And out of all those years since 1980 and all of our presidential primaries, we have the best track record in the country uh, for choosing, essentially predicting, if you will, who the eventual Republican nominee will be. We only missed one time. That was in 2012. And I expect that record will continue. Oh, I, I know we're talking about Republicans today, but you're right about what you said. I know the current occupant of the White House has um, a lot of people to thank on in the other party in South Carolina, which had a big effect on the Democratic side last time around. So it's been a very, very important state. Uh, for both parties. Uh, New York Times headline here, particular on the former governor, Nikki Haley, South Carolina strategy has a Donald Trump problem. And to read the quote, it says, if she's to make a real play for the Republican presidential nomination, South Carolina is where Ms. Haley needs to prove the party's voters want to turn the page on the Trump era and where she's predicted she will face one-on-one -on -one after strong showings in Iowa and New Hampshire. It, your sense of the voters, I know you're probably not picking sides here as a party chair about whether they're no. turning the page or whether there's still enthusiasm for the way the party's gone in recent years. I'm trying to fit, phrase it as delicately as possible. <laughs> well, look, every candidate has their own strategy. And many times that's not just uh, relative to messaging, but it's also relative to which states they choose to spend time in. You know, whether it's Iowa because they have a caucus system or New Hampshire because of the primary voters up there. Uh, after there, you'll have a caucus in Nevada, uh, and then we have our primary. Uh, and each state is a little bit different in terms of the makeup, demographics, if you will, the, mm -hmm. the, the ideological demographics of, of the voters in those uh, respective contests in these states. And, you know, candidates make decisions about how they'll spend their time, how they'll invest their resources. I'm not going to get in the business of a handicapping candidates, uh, but, you know, the, the fact is that primary voters here in South Carolina expect to see the candidates, they expect to be able to talk with them meet with them in county party meetings around the state. Uh, and they know what our history is, and they know the impact they've been able to have on making sure that eventually we have a solid conservative nominee. They expect to be able to do that again. It's yeah, so the last point you bring up, uh, the point about the different demographic uh, makeups of each state and what have you. As you know, the Democrats flip things around this time, and they put South Carolina up at the top. Uh, Republicans have stayed the same. You know, the criticism of states like Iowa and New Hampshire is that they're not as diverse as a state like yours. But uh, what do you make of what's happened on the other side, whereas your party is stuck with the same well, old system? I I think that has more to do with a deal that was done between Jim Clyburn and Joe Biden, quite frankly. Clyburn okay. delivered South Carolina for Joe Biden, you know, uh, in the last mm -hmm. cycle. Uh, and as a result of that, you have a uh, you know, Kamala Harris as vice president. Uh, you had uh, Supreme Court uh, Justice uh, uh, Jackson. Uh, and then now their primary being moved up to the front. I think that's all Jim Clyburn. That's between them. Uh, our dates are independent of one another. Mm -hmm. uh, always have been. Uh, and, uh, you know, look, our, our voters expect to be able to have an impact on that process. And again, we have historically, and we've, we have the best track record in the country again. Mm -hmm. And again, I expect that will continue. See how it plays out and uh, hope for the best in terms of competition still being yeah. there February the 24th in South Carolina. Uh, Drew, thanks for coming on today. Appreciate it very much. Thanks so much for watching. Just go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.